Now that you have a good idea about the field of IO psychology, it is time to learn the essentials of one of the foundations of the upcoming chapters, research. This section does not provide an in-depth discussion of research techniques and procedures, but it gives you enough information so that you can understand the method that was used when a study is mentioned in the text. Though most of you will probably not go on to careers as researchers, understanding research and statistics is important for several reasons. First is answering questions and making decisions. One of the characteristics of IO psychology is its extensive use of research and statistics. Although there are many reasons for this reliance on research, the most important is that research ultimately saves organizations money. To many of you, this last statement may seem a bit insensitive. Keep in mind, however, that for most organizations, the most important thing is the bottom line. If IO psychologists are not able to save the company considerably more money than it pays for their salary and expenses, they will be without a job. These monetary savings can result from many factors, including increased employee satisfaction, increased productivity, and fewer accidents. Perhaps an excellent example of how research can save organizations money involves the employment interview. For years, many organizations relied on the employment interview as the main method for selecting employees. But researchers have shown that the unstructured employment interview is not the best predictor of future behavior on their job. Thus, without research, an organization might still be spending money on a method that actually lowers its profits rather than raises them. Second reason is research in everyday life. Research confronts us on an almost daily basis, both at home and on the job. As a student, you will encounter research throughout this and other courses. As a professional, you will receive advertisements and sales pitches containing references to research supporting a particular product. At home, you read the results of political polls in the newspaper and are bombarded with TV commercials trumpeting the fat-burning wonders of the ab master or claiming that 9 out of 10 dentists recommend a product. Understanding research helps you to critically listen and analyze results of these studies to make more intelligent decisions. After all, you would hate to buy a fitness product based on the results of poorly conducted research. Third reason is common sense is often wrong. We are often tempted not to conduct research because the answer to a question is common sense. Unfortunately, common sense is not so common and is often wrong. Until the end of the 15th century, it was common sense that the world was flat and that a person sailing toward the horizon would fall off the earth. Until late in the 20th century, common sense said that women employees could not perform as well as men. In other words, many of our common sense policies have been, and continue to be, wrong. For example, imagine taking a multiple choice test. After finishing the test, you go back and read question 32 but can't decide if you should stick with your original response of B or change it to C. What would you do? Most students respond with what they have always been told, stick with your first answer. If you stuck with this piece of common advice, you probably would miss the question. There are studies investigating this question concluded that contrary to common sense, the majority of their time, an answer will be changed from wrong to right. Another victory for research.